Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity tutorial series where we're taking a look at making a dialogue system for your game. Uh, for whatever game you're using, we're using an example of a 2D kind of side scrolling adventure thing here, but you can put it in whatever your game is. Uh, so, last time we looked at just creating the box around us here, uh, and this time we're going to look at how to enable the box from within the game. Uh, whether that's walking into a zone area or having a, an, another character in the game activate our text which is like this little pink guy here uh, so we're going to need a little bit more uh, different text to you so instead of our example one uh, I've just created another little text file that I'm going to drag in here uh, if we click on that you can see it's just a little bit of text for him to say uh, so what we're going to do is on our NPC guy here there's actually already a box collider on him I'm going to remove that but what we want to do is add a box collider. Uh, I don't know why I mo moved that one. I don't know what size it was. That's why I removed it. Uh, so we just zoom in on him here so we can see how big things are. So what we're going to do is create a zone around this guy where once you walk into it, it'll activate some text. Uh, and you're going to have to walk closer to him and activate some more text for him to say. So we're going to make this a trigger. We're going to make it just a little bit bigger than he is. Like that. And then here we're going to create a new object and we'll just say, uh, we call this the NPC shout zone. So this is a zone where the NPC guy will be able to like contact the player or get the player's attention or whatever you want to say. Uh, so we're going to add a box collider to this as well. Make that a trigger. We're going to put it down near him too, but then we're going to make the size way bigger like this, maybe not quite that wide okay uh, that's the basics of what we want to do with that uh, but we're going to need to make some changes to the script we made in the first episode because it's it's pretty basic from what we had there so we want to add a bit more functionality to it um, so we're going to open our text box manager script and we have it here and <clears throat> so what we had is when the text got to the end of its of its cycle it basically turns itself turns the box off of the screen so what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to turn the box on and off from outside of this script rather than just having it do it by itself so we're going to add a couple of new functions down here we're going to add void uh, I'm sorry no we want to do public void public void enable text box and that's in curly brackets and we also want to do public void disable text box like that and put some curly brackets there so we've already shown how we disable the box which is with this line of code where if the current line is greater than the end of that line we disable the code so or disable the box so we're going to copy that and put that into our disable text box here and then so that we're not just using the same lines of code again we're going to delete that bit there and we're just going to call disable text box from here so put that in there so now whenever our current line goes to the, is bigger than our ending line we'll call our disable text box and we'll go down here and we'll do that line here um, and obviously if we want to enable the text boxes basically we want to do the opposite of this so we'll copy that and we'll paste it in there and we'll say true and we don't want our our update script here is always trying to update the lines and it's cycling through the code whenever the key but the return button is pressed so obviously we don't want it doing that when the text box isn't active actually i don't know why i put a semicolon there uh, but we don't want it doing that when the text box isn't active so we're going to add an extra little bool variable up here we're going to say public bool uh we'll just call it is active and basically we're going to say down here in our update loop if not is active so if this if our text box shouldn't isn't active and isn't being shown then we don't need to update the current line at any point so we'll just say return here so then our none of this code is running so we don't have to worry about it and at the moment if we just pop back into our game here and wait for all this to compile just go back to our textbook manager so we we'll say say we have we know that our box is active at the start so we're just going to turn that on for a second and um, 
we have it so that when the thing is starting up, our, our text is active and that's fine. We go through that and now it goes offline as soon as it gets to line three or as soon as we finish line three. Um, so we want the system to be able, the reason I had is active checked there is if we don't have is active checked and we press play. Now the text box itself is, is active on the screen, but the code isn't running. So if we hit enter, nothing happens and it doesn't cycle through the code. So rather than having to remember to set this up the exact right way every single time, we want to, like to remember that you have to turn off your dialogue boxes before the game starts or anything like that. Or say if you're in a situation where you want dialogue straight away, you have to remember to have your dialogue boxes turned on. We just build that into the code itself. So oh, we just need to reload these second in our start function here what we'll just say is if is active is true then we're going to enable the text box else so if is active is false basically then what we're going to do is disable the text box so now whether the text box is active or not will only depend on whether you have this one variable turn on or off just while it's compiling down here so if we have it off while we start the game then we we'll hit play and our text box should disappear just like that and then we can wander around uh, but if we turn it on and press play once it starts up we see the text box is there and we can cycle through it but while this is still open here, we've got one other little problem. Our player can move around. And we probably don't want him moving around while he's talking to... So if he's talking to this guy, we don't want him to be able to move. You, If there's a little bit of text on screen, you want him to be frozen still. Um, actually, we probably want to give our player the... Op or we want to give ourselves the option of being able to do that. So what we'll say is... Um, yeah, we'll create a public bool and we'll call this um, stop player movement. Uh, and then we're going to go into our player controller, whatever player controller you're using for your system. Uh, what we're going to do is just before whatever movement you have set up for your own thing mine is very simple just a little bit of code here for movement but before any movement we're just gonna we're gonna add a new public bool and we're gonna say we'll call this can move i suppose and then down here we're going to say um if or if if sorry if Oh, damn it. If not can move like that, then we're going to basically we're saying if can move is false, so the player is not allowed to move at the moment, we'll just return like that. So then the code doesn't go down to any of this stuff, and we can just uh, not worry about the player inputting anything while the game's run. So if we go back into our text box manager, if stop player movement is true, then basically down here we're going to say. When the, our text box is being enabled or disabled, we're going to say if stop player movement is true, then uh, since we we've already in the, in our script we've already found our player controller script, we did that in the last episode. Uh, we're going to say down here player dot uh, can move is equal to false. Uh, and no matter what we're going to want to set the player that can move is equal to true when the box is disabled because even if he's able to move the whole time we want we just to save ourselves a, a couple of lines of code we're going to say well no matter what we're going to want our player to be able to move afterwards so now if we pop back in here once this compiles down we should be able to see that the player can't move while the box is active on the screen. So it's all loaded up and yep, I can't move at all. And if we just skip through this stuff, yep, we, now we can move around just like that. 
But we want to be able to demonstrate activating and deactivating our text boxes outside of just turning it on straight away at the very start. So if we go back in here, uh, we'll set this not to active because we don't want the text box appearing uh, all the time. And we're going to create a new script, a new C-sharp script, and we're going to call, we'll say, uh, not a capital C, a small C please, activate text at line. So what this is going to do, this is what we're going to use to activate the text and to be able to use it and um, call at different points. So what we could do in our text box manager, we have a, our script, our example script that we're using here. And what we could do is replace that with the text we want to use, which is our NPC speech and pop that in there. But much more likely you're going to want to be able to use uh, multiple different scripts for different characters to be able to move them around your game and have it a bit, be a bit more versatile so uh, i'm going to open this activate text script we just reload all them and um, let's have this open to the side here but in our text box manager what we're going to want to be able to do is to reload uh, our line our text with a new uh, text file so we're going to create a new function down here. We're going to call it public void, uh, with, oh, not a capital R behind the reload script. And basically, all this is going to do is just enable it so that we can load back up a script, uh, or make make it make it so that we can use different scripts within our game, or different text files, sorry, within our game to be able to load them up and do fun, nifty things with them. So here we're going to say if, oh wait, no, actually, what we want to do here is we want to pass in a text file from somewhere else. So in our in our little brackets here, we're going to say text asset, the text. So much like up here, we have our text access text asset text file which is the one we're using we're going to pass in a different kind of file but it's still going to be a text asset sorry we're going to pass in a different file but it's the same type of file so we're going to say if the text is not equal to null so if the if there's we're making sure that there is a file being passed in we'll say text lines which is our array if we go back in here uh, and the text back manager our text lines is our array of dialogue lines that are being used in the game text lines is equal to new string one so what this will do oh not capital s a small s there new string one so what this will do is take the array that already exists and it'll remove the one that exists there and I'll say okay we don't want to use the old text files we want to take that out and fill it in with a new uh, amount of files because say the first one that we used was 10 lines long and our new our new file is going to be like say six or seven lines what we're ending up then with is three redundant lines that are being used in this array and we don't really need to do that so what we're going to do is just make it so it's just one back down to like being one length of array and then it's going to populate with all the new lines from our new script and how we're going to do that is basically the exact same as we did up here our text lines text file that text that split so we just copy that paste it in here but instead of using the text file now we're using the text that we're taking into from the other script so we're going to say the text here just like that and we'll save that so now we have a little function here that will be able to say from from our from our activate text script we'll be able, we'll be able to assign a different text to this and say okay we want to load that into our text box manager and we're going to do that exactly here so we're going to say uh, what we could do here be public text asset the text not with a capital E we just call it the text for handiness sake uh, and we're going to we'll need a new starting point for our script for this script so like that and we need an end point 
So I'm going to say end line. Uh, we need to know which text box manager we're using. So public text box manager. Uh, we'll say we'll call this the text manager. Oh, we'll just call this a text box actually, a bit shorter. Uh, and yeah, that'll do for now. We'll add a couple more things in a few minutes, but for now we'll say, so in our start function, we need to find the text box manager that's been used in the scene. So the text box is equal to find object of type text box manager, like that. Uh, that's basically all we need to do there. And then we're going to leave update alone for a moment. And we're going to we're just going to set up the basic one for activating as soon as the player walks into an area first and then we'll do the button press version afterwards. So in here we're going to, or down below our update we're going to say void uh, on on trigger enter 2d collider collider 2d other some curly brackets and in here we're going to say if other dot name is equal to no equal to player, which is our player that we're fine we're using in the game or whatever you whatever you're calling your player. Make sure that you have that name being used here, and always remember, of course, that when you're comparing these kind of strings, you have to make sure the capitalization capital capitalization is the exact same for all of them. Okay, so basically, in here we're going to say, um, okay, the We've got a new text box being required to be used. So we're going to say the text box, which is our manager. In there, we're going to call the reload script function. So text box reload script. And what we're going to pass in is up here, we have our, our text asset file, which is the text. So we're going to pass into that the text. And we need to put a semicolon at the end of that as well, just like that. And then the text box dot current line will be our new start our start line from this script and the text box dot end that line yeah is equal to end line from this script uh, and we're gonna do one more thing actually we may or may not want uh, this little zone to be destroyed when it gets finished so we're going to say public public bool uh, destroy when oop, destroy when I can't spell when apparently destroy when activated and then down here we're going to say okay if destroy when activated is true then destroy not capital D destroy destroy game object so we'll save that and we'll just pop back into the game here so the way we want that destroy when active to work is say with this guy he has this zone around him that when you walk into the dialogue box gets activated and we probably we don't need him to be shouting at the player every time so we're going to leave that activated or we're going to leave that make sure that's destroyed sorry once it's done so on our shout zone script we're going to add that new script we just created which is activate text at line we need to give that a text asset file so we're going to say mp mpc speech into there and the start line will be zero and our end line will be one because i believe that's yeah so zero and one is the script, that little bit of script there uh, and we want it to destroy when activated. Uh, well, not when activated. I suppose I will leave it at that for now. But that's that's probably not a very logical sentence because it's not destroyed when it's activated. It's destroyed uh, once it's finished playing. But I suppose this is destroyed as soon as it's activated. The text box is what keeps playing. Okay, that does make sense then. <laughs> okay, so we'll save this uh, and we'll just run this now to see how it works. 
So if we just highlight the text box manager, we can see our original file is still loaded up there. We've got our example file in there and we've got our uh, 10 lines of text here. Uh, it's, it's been deactivated obviously because we had the is active turned off. So that's fine. So if we move our player just into the zone. Hmm. Well, it reloaded the file like we wanted. It still says text file here, that's fine, but um, it reloaded the dialog just the way we wanted, but for some reason it didn't activate our text box, which is obviously not what we want. Uh, oh, because we didn't say the text box dot enable, is it enable text box? Yes, it is, isn't it? We didn't add that bit of script, so it doesn't know to enable the text box. Because remember, we added that function in here. So, of course, if we go back in here now, hit play again. Should see again, so we see our 10 lines pop up. If we walk over to the right, oh, our text pops up. It's not being activated. Is that not part of the... Is Oh, we're not setting the is active to be true. <laughs> is active is equal to true when it's enabled, uh, and is active is equal to false when disabled. So this is the thing. Scripts don't always <laughs> work first time. If you can manage to think them true properly, that's always helpful, of course, but there's all, you, you need to, that's why it's best to do things gradually like this, not to like write a whole big, 100 and 200 lines of code in the script and then you find out that it doesn't work somewhere along the line you want to do little bits and pieces like this so now we walked over and we got the right bit of the script we got hey there who are you and then we're like oh oh uh who are you mr man and we go try to talk to him but we have no way of activating any kind of text with this guy so let's we're going to add uh on our npc we're going to add the same bit of script again uh, activate text at line script uh, but we wanted rather than just being activated by um, our NPC guy or us walking close to him we want to be activated by pressing the button when we're close to him so if we go back in here and um, back to our activate text at line script what we're going to do here now we're going to add a couple of extra bools in here we're going to say public bool uh, require button press and public bool. Uh, this doesn't need to be public actually. We can just make this a private bool. Private bool uh, wait for press. So in in here, I think. Yeah. In here, inside of our if other not name is equal to player, if require button press is true, then we don't want it to automatically load up and run this the or uh, activate the text box. What we want it to do is say, okay, uh, we will say wait for press is equal to true, and then return, so that it doesn't do anything else on us. Uh, and actually, what we want to do is say void on trigger, no, not three G's, on trigger exit, exit 2D, collider 2D, other, same as we did just above. What we want to say here is whenever the object, the, the player leaves the area, so if other dot name is equal to player. So when the player leaves the area, whether it's require button press or not, we want to say wait for press is equal to false. Just so that whenever the player leaves the zone, he can't activate the text box when he leaves. Uh, and then in our update loop here, what we're going to say is if, if wait for press and also, so if wait for press is true, so we know we're waiting for a button to be pressed, and we press a button, so input dot 
guess key down uh, key code let's say just say J for handiness sake so if key code J is pressed if all that happens then we want to run the same bit of script that we've done down below here so we'll just take all this stuff like that I'll we'll paste that in there and we'll still keep the if destroy when activated as well so we'll save that and we'll go back in here so on our shout zone once this is compiled and it'll load up for me here on our shout zone uh, we have required button press we're gonna leave that blank so we won't have to worry about that uh, but on our NPC now we need to give him some details so our NPC speech is on I think it's line six and seven so if we just open this up here we can check six and seven. Oh, so actually we minus one from them so it's on line five and six so we want our start point to be five and our end point to be six we want to make sure we have our text file in there and we're going to require a button press for this guy and we won't destroy him when activated because we don't want the player that this little fella to disappear on us so we'll press play here now text box disappears so we can walk back and forward and then hey there who are you we walk over and we say hello oh the strong silent hi oh <laughs> we've got a bit of a problem there uh, but we're, we're our text box is loading up just the way we want it to there's this one tiny little issue which is I'm fairly sure that on our canvas if we just zoom it out a bit and go in here we never resize our text box yeah so you can see it's it's super tiny so we we'll just grab this and make it big like that and while we're here actually rather than centering it like that we'll make it uh, relative to the panel so it stretches to fit the panel and the screen size changes so now if we hit play we should be able to read their whole text this time Walk over here. Hit J. Oh, the strong talent type, huh? That's okay, I guess. There we go. Now we've got text boxes being enabled and disabled. And you can load up different scripts based on different objects. So you could have 100 different scripts all attached to different NPCs and they'll run to our text box manager. And you don't just have to have a script 2,000 lines long uh, full of speech for all your characters or anything like that. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. And you can enable and disable. Uh, your text boxes you can have them activated by walking into a zone or have them activated by a key press or any other kind of requirement you can kind of decide how to enable now that you have an enable and disable function it's easy to call it whenever you need to so there you go that's the basics of how to add a nice little dialogue to your system originally this is where i was planning on ending this little look at how to add a dialogue box but from feedback from the first episode some people were requesting how to have the text appear letter by letter like I like it did in older games so in the third part of this little short little super short series we're going to take a look ahead to do that so make sure you come back next time and we'll do some more tutorial goodness thanks for watching everybody and i'll see you soon